Hello, I'm Ben Wattenberg. Gambling is big business in America. From the glittering casinos of Las Vegas to the Vermont General Store, Americans wager billions of dollars a year on games of chance. But should the government be your bookie? Joining us to sort through the conflict and the consensus are William Edington, Professor of Economics at the University of Nevada, Reno, and the Director of the Institute for Gambling and Commercial Gaming, Gabrielle Brenner, professor at the University of Montreal Business School and author of Gaming and Speculation, A Theory and History and a Future of Some Human Decisions, Father Robert Drynan, professor of law at Georgetown University and author of The Fractured Dream, America's Divisive Moral Choices, and Robert Goodman, director of the United States Gambling Study and author of the forthcoming book, The Luck Business, America and the Culture of Chance. The question before this house, is America taking a chance on gambling? This week on Think Tank. Americans love to gamble. They bet everything from dogs, horses, sports and highlight to lotteries, blackjack, bingo and roulette. For the last 200 years, much of this was done through illegal bookies, game rooms and numbers rackets. But in the last 40 years, much has changed. State lotteries have largely replaced illegal numbers rackets. Millions of Americans buy tickets in the hope of becoming instant millionaires despite astronomical odds against them. In 1964, New Hampshire became the first state to legalize lotteries. In 30 years, lotteries have spread to 37 states. And there is big money to be made. In 1964, New Hampshire residents wagered $5 million on the lottery. By 1993, Americans bet $25 billion on the lottery. States typically rake in 40% of that in profits, which they spend on schools, highways, and other public projects. Now casino gambling is exploding across America. It used to be that you had to go to Atlantic City or Nevada to gamble. Today, riverboat casinos line the Mississippi, and casinos on Indian reservations are sprouting up almost everywhere. State governments back these projects because they are eager for the jobs and tax income that casinos promise. And there is a lot of money to be taxed. Americans spend nearly $35 billion a year on gambling. That's seven times more than they spend at the movies or at sporting events. Some opponents argue that the promises of economic benefits from gambling are exaggerated. Others say that the idea of government as bookie teaches wrong moral lessons. Government-approved gambling, they say, appeals to greed and deceives people, especially poor people, into believing that they can get something for nothing. But with nearly every state interested in opening casinos, gambling in America is on a roll. Let's begin by going around the room once uh, with you, uh, Gabrielle Brenner. Are people who gamble in public venues like uh, casinos or lotteries, are, are they suckers? Those are no more suckers than people that buy People's Magazine or uh, go to a uh, movie, even if it's a bad movie, they decide how to spend their leisure dollar. Okay, Bill Edington. Well, gambling has become more and more a commodity in the last uh, 20 or 30 years in the perception of both uh, individuals and the general public. And the real issue is, is gambling truly a commodity? I think uh, gambling has changed so much in the last couple of years that it's, uh, it's no longer gambling the way it used to be. And what's happened is government has basically become the largest promoter of gambling in the country. So I think it's a, a problem not of people being suckers. People have always gambled, but it's a problem of the government trying to get them to gamble more and trying to make suckers out of people. If, if you look at it that way. Okay. Father Dryden? Uh, America in the last generation had done something that he never did for 200 years, namely pander to people uh, and, and ex exaggerate their greed. All of the churches and synagogues uh, were opposed, are still opposed to this organized gambling. 
We don't know yet what it's doing to the psyche of the people. More and more problems uh, can occur with people uh, addicted to gambling and the devastation of families. I think that it's time to reconsider the whole thing. But d don't, uh, don't churches hold raffles where people win money or turkeys? Yes, or but that's not organized by the state and it is at a very, very low level. Would, would, would you favor uh, private gambling where the government is not involved? I mean, like uh, Las Vegas, where, where Bill Edington is from, is not government run, those are private. Well, I'd, I'd have less objection to that, but the real objection that people have now more and more is the fact that the government, while it seeks to cure us from alcoholism and from drugs and from other addictions, it is urging the addiction to gambling. And now, on, with the latest on the Indian reservations, we don't know the enormous consequences of what we're doing. You know, it, it, it's interesting when uh, when most of the gambling that was going on was uh, the province of organized crime, you didn't have full page ads in the newspapers and spots on TV urging people to gamble more. The uh, uh, governments are now spending $300 million a year just in advertising their gambling products. Uh, organized crime never did that. Now, that's not an argument and, and, for organized and, and, crime and, to do and it. And the state lottery business is probably the worst bet you can make in gambling. I mean, it's you, it's you, not a good bet, but uh, I mean, I don't have any problem well, with people what is, what is decide this? to do things that are against their interests. Uh, I have no concern with that. The concern I have is the role of government in that process. Uh, government at one point was uh, regulating this industry. It was trying to protect people's interests in it. And I think they've shifted their role uh, from being uh, a regulator to being a promoter. I believe the problem of gambling per se is not a problem. People have gambled since a cave uh, age. Uh, they must have been gambling then. But what is new now is the role of government. The proper role of government in a gambling industry is to regulate and to tax, not to promote. Now, you are speaking about state lotteries, which are maybe the biggest instance of government being the promoter of gambling. In Canada, we have also ca state casinos now. In the casino are, are state-owned. In Montreal, we have uh, one of the most successful ones. And in Winnipeg, we have uh, another state casino, and some are coming. Now, governments are not constrained by uh, the same accounting and financial uh, constraints as mm. every private business. And there may be too much gambling because they don't look at this at the, at the bottom line, like a private business would. Well, uh, not only that, but they're, they're having these major negative impacts on other private businesses. We've given, gam the government's essentially given the gambling industry in certain locations a monopoly to run their enterprise. So while they have the exclusive role of providing gambling products, a particular company, meanwhile, other businesses like bowling alleys or uh, people who sell shirts or furniture are losing business. Because now, Because there's a finite amount of money. There's a finite amount price. of money and what, what we're seeing in, in all our studies now is money being shifted out of local enterprises and into these new gambling ventures. Bill yeah. Edington, yeah, defend like to your, your industry. Well, I would like to make a point <laughs> on the role of government that I think is very important and that is that in the last six years we've seen a phenomenal proliferation of casino side gaming in the United States and Canada and in many other countries throughout the world. And I think the United States is perhaps weakest in terms of its own perspective as to why it is doing it. We have, in effect, competition among jurisdictions to legalize casinos, well, to capture uh, tourist dollars or exported dollars from other jurisdictions, which I think is perhaps the wrong reason to legalize gambling. The underlying question that you have to come back to, and it's one that Bob is alluding to, is that is gambling an activity that is a legitimate activity for citizens to participate in, or is it something that we really don't like, but we're going to legalize it in spite of itself to capture the... Uh, ancillary economic benefits such as taxes or job creation that it might bring about. I think it's very important for jurisdictions who are considering gambling that they ask the question, is this an activity that on balance is worthwhile for our citizens to freely participate in? Well, we, we also have to ask whether it creates jobs. I mean, that's, it's basically a jobs program. Well, no, I mean, but it, the lottery it's basically, no, it's uh, on, on, the, on the state side, it is, it is basically a revenue enhancer, as we say in this wonderful well, town. I mean, it, it's, well, it's, it's, bringing, it it's bringing the taxes lotteries, in. Right. The lotteries were essentially put in place as a revenue enhancer. Right. They, the lotteries employ very few people. Now uh, we've escalated that, government's escalated that, and they're looking at casinos, riverboats, uh, slot machines, basically to create jobs and to bring in revenue. And you'll notice 
that almost all of the new ventures are in places that are economically depressed. You don't have casino companies going into affluent areas trying to locate casinos there. They're saying, this is your way out of poverty. This is the way to create jobs. It's the single most uh, significant economic development policy on a local and state level right now. As I say, we spend uh, uh, hundreds of millions to promote gambling. We're spending only 50 million nationwide on supporting our local uh, uh, manufacturing industries, uh, local small businesses. Uh, we're spending yeah. six times that amount on our gambling industry. And I hope that the United States learns the lesson again. We had gambling from the beginning of the Republic, and then it grew into the 1830s and 1840s. Then there was a great crusade against it. It was corrupting people, and the Quakers particularly came forward and said, this is debasing and degrading to human beings. And then the states abolished it, and the federal government came in and abolished it. And until really 20 years ago, 15 years ago, we abided by that moral decision. And now we're trying to learn again what they learned in America, and they just abolished it. And of all of the forces that uh, led, lead to this deception, I think the London Economist said it well, that the government is seeking to deceive people, and if they had the true facts, they would not bet because they can't possibly win. It's oh, all no, a big that's deception. that's not true. I believe this is, has been found w a lot of times that people do know that the odds are against them, but they also know, especially for the lotteries, that uh, for a lot of them it's their only means to get rich. So people who want to abolish it are people that have other means to get rich. They can uh, play on the stock market, they can play on the commodity market, they well, can marry somebody, or they can inherit wealth, these, these and they the, want... The, the, or, they, or they can work hard and earn it. But, but, can, but, 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 but I would like, to, I would like to interest on the moral not just aspect. The yeah, let, I, I want to come back, please. Yeah. Uh, for the last uh, 20, 30 years, uh, what has characterized our societies had been um, Government getting out of the business of trying to, uh, to legislate morality. Now there was a problem about uh, sexual conduct, and now there is a problem about gambling, and there are a lot of other co problems. And this, this legalization of gambling would go into the same, into the same aspect. I, I want to ask Father Dryan a question. If, if I uh, spend Thursday evenings with a group of buddies with beer and pretzel and, and, and we play poker, is that immoral? No, no, but I don't think that you have the same governmental things and you don't have an outside syndicate running right, it with okay. machines. So, so, so gambling itself is not immoral? No, no, it's, right. it's always now, now, if you have a private company without any government subsidy uh, uh, in a casino having uh, gambling that the government has licensed and they get a piece off the top, is that immoral? Well, you're, you're approaching the stage where you are addicting people, uh, the poor people, and the, the young people. But they were going to, to bookies before, exactly. before the state Well, well I know, but that, the bookie, that was all illegal. And the enforcement was very, very difficult. So the government, wrongly in my opinion, decided that let us legalize all of this and that we are the ones that are promoting it. There's, but, a, there's a real this conflict a of so interest. So let, me give you Japan, right. let me give you an interesting example. In Japan, the government has the monopoly on selling cigarettes. 85% of the cigarettes sold in Japan, sold by the government of Japan. In Japan, you cannot even get a label on a package of cigarettes that's saying this might be dangerous to your health. The, the healthcare industry there has difficulty getting any money to do research, government money to do research on the dangers of cigarette smoking. The problem is, what is the role of government? Should the government become so dependent on these revenues that it has a conflict of interest in terms of regulating that industry, in terms of contro controlling what that industry is doing. If they're the industry and their revenues are so dependent on it, they can't take a, uh, a, a, an unbiased position on it. And we see that in Japan. Well, that's that's, yeah, there are really three main reasons why people have opposed gambling, legalization of gambling in the past. The first is the morality argument, which in recent years has diminished in impact, partly because the institutions of the church and the state have diminished in their influence over the body politic. The second is organized crime and corruption linked to gambling, which is more a byproduct of illegal gambling and prohibitions against gambling than it is of legal, highly regulated gambling. The third is, I think, the real issue we're going to deal with over the next 20 or 30 years or into the indefinite future, and that is problem gambling or people who, who have difficulty controlling themselves when they gamble. And I think what is needed as part of the public policy debate is a better understanding of what are the realities you're confronting and well, what are the real costs well, of, one of, of the, problem One of gambling. the real costs is when people 
We're expanding the base of problem gamblers right now. The more ventures that we create, the more problem gamblers we have. This has very serious impacts on our economy. People who gamble and get in trouble don't pay off their debts. They borrow money. Uh, they wind up writing bad checks. They embezzle money. They engage in fraud. Th this is money lost to the private economy. When you see it as a jobs program, it all seems like we're just creating jobs and bringing in revenue, but we're losing a lot of money uh, isn't by that expanding also true gambling. With, isn't that also true with, say, alcohol and cigarettes? I mean, by, by, by legalizing alcohol yeah. and cigarettes, some people Absolutely. get addicted and get but lung cancer or get not cirrhosis promoting. of the liver. What? The government is not promoting Unless cigarettes. The, the government so is not promoting alcohol. So we are and in uh, fact, they're deterring it. They're seeking the, in they're, many, they're many trying. ways. You've got sectors <coughs> of the... Exactly. To urge temperance and <coughs> restraint. Well, it, it's not all governments. Uh, in Canada, for instance, uh, alcohol distribution is also state regulated, and I didn't see such a temperance movement. So again, we're coming back it, to the it problem of It is in many of states in the, United, in the United States. You have state liquor stores. Right? But yeah, but we are coming back to the problem stores, of you don't government have those state liquor stores uh, promoting the sale and of liquor. Well, you and have I, you have I think it's a red herring to speak about government being so dependent uh, on, on the money, on the mo revenues from gambling. If you are looking at the money involved, there are small amount. There is absolutely no modern government that could be, that could why, why do you reduce think the its is deficit. Doing it then? Oh, because they are desperate for money, but well, if you are looking at the money per se, at the sum per se, compare, for instance, either to the deficit of the government or to the total revenues of the government, it's we are speaking about very, it's very it's small. It's how, how, how much do governments in the United States take in from, from gambling? It's a significant industry. The gaming industry is nearly as large as the commercial airline industry in terms of gross revenues. In terms of tax revenues accruing to government, uh, lotteries is the largest tax collector. And I think if you're concerned on the public policy issues of the appropriate role of government, lotteries is where you end up focusing. Well, lottery, not, uh, well it was lotteries. lotteries I think it is hold, hold on, uh, Lotteries bring in more money to a state than a sales tax? To the government. Uh, not than a sales exactly. tax generally, but lotteries in the United States in 1993 exactly. generated total sales of about $25 billion. Uh, gross revenues after payment of prizes of about 13 billion and contributions to state tax coffers or earmark monies of about 9 billion. Yeah, but I, I, I agree with Gabrielle as a percentage of what, what the state budgets are, it's quite small. Uh, in, in many states, the lotteries make up anywhere from 1 to 3 percent of, of the total budget. It's really a political process that we're looking at here because it's very easy for politicians to say, let's bring in a new lottery game, let's bring in a new casino, we won't have to raise your taxes. The reality is they're not bringing in that much money, and the reality is it's harder, it's getting harder and harder to get people to gamble more and more. What's happening is the revenues are actually increasing, but the percentage that the governments are taking out of this is actually decreasing. By and large, all the surveys have shown that the industry has not been able to keep up with the revenue demands being made on them. So you see this enormous surge in interest, interest and, falls, and, and, you find and then they bring in new games. No. But what, you what, what is your problem with the gambling industry? Is it economic or moral? It's an economic. I, have, I gamble myself. I have no problem with it. I don't have any problem. It's economic. It, is it a job creation program? Do you really create jobs? You're not really creating, as this expands, you're, sa you're saturating the market, you're okay. sucking money out of other local businesses, you're, you're asking other local businesses to lose revenues and lose jobs. Why should the government be involved in doing this? It's totally inconsistent with the role of the government as we envisioned in the history of America and in Canada. The government is supposed to be promoting the virtue of people and the morals of people, helping them with their health and get rid of their addictions. That's the traditional role of the government as the educator, as the uplifter. And now they come along and say, well, we, we need a free lunch and we don't want to tax you according to an equitable formula. Let the people work it out that they will pay sales tax or property tax or income tax or something like that. Rather than say, we are going to go to the poor and the people who are weak and we are encouraging them. I think that's just totally inconsistent with American morality. Yeah. I think the real issue here is a question of paternalism versus self-responsibility and whether gambling should be treated differently than other commodities. And that is the fundamental issue. The reason we've seen so much legalization has been because jurisdictions do want the jobs and they do want the tax revenues and the investment and the re 
the, and the stimulation that gambling promises or gaming promises. The real question is, does it deliver on its promises? And in some jurisdictions it does, and in some jurisdictions it does not. It, Nevada, where I come from, has been the fastest growing state in the U.S. over the last three decades because it has had, if you wish, a moral monopoly on legal casino-style gambling. That monopoly is now diminishing, and we're seeing uh, new jurisdictions, uh, many of them capture the latent demand in those regions uh, with high profits and large job creation. Right. The real question is, does that sustain I'm itself in, favor of in the long term? Okay? I'm in favor of paternalism, okay? I'm in favor of paternalism. That is not paternalism. This is a good government that urges virtue in our people, and that's what the U.S. Constitution does, and but, that but, the but, whole but American but history... You said, uh, you said that gambling... I, I thought you said that, that you do not think that gambling itself is immoral. Then how can you oh, make no. a, a virtue argument for it? No, I, I'm not saying that this is a tendency that goes back to in all of recorded civilization. No, it's is and that, that, it, that however, it is so dangerous that people, a certain number of people, can get it out of control. And I don't think that the government should be say, "Do it, do it, and you'll be a millionaire." No, no, advertising. I, 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 I hold, just to stop, stop for one second. I, I, I want somebody. There is another twist on this gambling argument, which is the role of the Indian reservations. Could somebody mm. sort of speak to that and just yeah. uh, for our viewers? Bill, yeah. why don't you just lay it out? What the what the facts? What's happening? Well, I think what's happened with Indian gaming. Indian gaming was a. Uh, a phenomenon that has occurred in the last few years that has created tremendous economic opportunity for autonomous Indian tribes throughout the United States who have been able to exploit especially casino style gaming and what has happened is those tribes have done the same thing that Nevada has done over the years and that is to be the monopoly that has captured the latent demand for gambling within their regions. The tribes themselves in many cases have become quite affluent. The question as to whether this is good or not for the tribes really has to be analyzed on a tribe by tribe basis, because well, some mean, of them are being foolish and some on, are not. On balance, uh, well, as Sophie Tucker once said, it, it's, it's, uh, I've, I've been rich and I've been poor, it's better to be rich. I mean, yeah, I, no, I assume... No one's, yes. no one's yes, going to argue but again, it's against being rich, and, and clearly, for most of the tribes, it's been a benefit, but I think we can't just limit our picture to just what's happening in the tribes. No, well, we, we, we have but, to look but, at we, we've what, it, about what it... No, I, I, I want to follow this, 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 this uh, yeah. Indian tribes thing uh, a little further. I mean, this has been a disadvantaged class in, in the United States, uh, uh, Native Americans yeah. living on reservations. Uh, hasn't this helped them? You're, you're a social, well, social liberal, Father Dronin. Well, all right. I, it may have helped them in the short run. But in the long run, I don't think this builds up that reservation, giving them jobs and opportunities and good health and that they may have a few jobs. Well, what do the young people coming along think? Will they think that the white people have victimized us once again? In terms of what we've done in the past, we haven't made any opportunities available for either the tribes or many disenfranchised groups in the United States. And to see gambling as a panacea, either for tribes or economically depressed cities or economically depressed racetracks, this is no magic bullet. Let us go again very quickly around the room and just for a, a brief comment about what we, this panel, agrees upon and what you disagree upon. And Father Dryden, well, why I don't you start I am reinforced in the, my belief that the great moral tradition of America was correct, that if we allow gambling, we discourage it, and certainly the government should not be there pandering to the weakest tendencies of people that I'm going to get rich all of a sudden. I have the hope that somehow in the plebiscites that the voices of the borrow forces in America is going to be heard and the people will say that's not the way to go for this great country. Bob? I think that we, we have the federal government and local and state governments operating at cross purposes. Federal government is trying to expand the economy using industrial policy, trying to put money into high tech industry so we can be competitive on the global marketplace. On the local and state level, we're basically trying to expand a predatory industry. And I say predatory in the sense that it can only grow at the expense of other local businesses. Bill Eddington. Yeah. I think that the real issue confronting both local governments and federal government is one of where do we want to have gambling as part of our society. Ten years ago, we said we want it almost nowhere. Now we're saying almost everywhere. I think the reality is we want it somewhere in between those two extremes. But there is tremendous difficulty of getting to that point because we basically have political jurisdictions competing against other political jurisdictions to capture the economic benefits. And that leads to bad policy. Gabrielle? I, I believe that gambling is a perfectly legitimate activity like any other activity. What is not legitimate is to see the role of government. The proper role of government, I'm sure Professor Drennan won't agree with me, is not to legislate morality or to try to uplift people, but to regulate and probably to tax. Now, what we have now is a government that are so desperate of money that don't think about regulation, they think only about taxing. 
what I would see would be the future of an industry where gambling would be allowed, but there would be a very strict regulatory framework for it, no monopoly given to one special group or another, and let the free market see who is going to be the winner and okay. where people want to spend. Okay, thank you, uh, Gabrielle Brenner, Father Robert Drynan, Bill Eddington, and Bob Goodman, and thank you. As you know, we enjoy hearing from our audience. Please send your comments to New River Media, 1150 17th Street Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20036, or we can be reached via email at thinktv at aol.com. For Think Tank, I'm Ben Wattenberg. This has been a production of BJW Incorporated in association with New River Media, which are solely responsible for its content.